today we're going to look how to straighten an unplumbed wall. So this wall is out of plumb, it's not straight at all and you only find out once you put a door liner on. So a door liner has been fitted after the plasterboarding has been done and there's at least a 12mm difference from the bottom towards the top. Now today we're going to figure out ways of how to get this wall nice, plumb and flat. So then when we plaster up to the door liners, it's nice and square and there's not a gap. First thing, what I've discovered is the thickness difference is probably the rough thickness of a bit of plasterboard. So what I've done is cut some strips, run them towards the bottom of the wall and I've fixed them in place. And that way it's going to give me something to work towards. So then when I'm applying the bonding, the undercoat plaster, which we'll talk about in a minute, and I'm applying that to the wall, at least we've got something to rule off with. And it just makes it a bit easier, gives us a bit of a guide to work from. Now we're going to mix some British chips and bonding, which is the undercoat plaster we're going to be using. We're going to mix them up, we're just going to apply it, and then we're going to rule it flat. Okay, so we've got the bonding mixed up, and now we're going to start applying the bonding. Now, the thing is with this, is you really don't have to be accurate when you're applying bonding, we're just going to whack it onto the wall, but the main aim is we're going to use that rail and that guide of plasterboard at the bottom, and that's going to be the point of reference we're going to work off. Now, because of that, you don't have to worry too much about how you apply the bonding. Um, this isn't made to be applied flat with a trowel, it's made to be applied and ruled off straight with a straight edge. That's how it's going to be done and that's whenever you're doing any backing work actually. It's never your trowel that does the work, it's always the straight edge, the derby, the feather edge that you're using. So like this one, this is a 1.8 meter feather edge. Um, I'll be honest, these to me are the best straight edge you can buy. I think they're brilliant, easy to use and when you're cleaning off, it's very easy to get the render back off again. But all we're doing is putting all the pressure at the bottom edge and using it against that rail to bring all that bonding back and what that's going to do is give us a nice clean edge to work from. Now this isn't going to be perfect so we're going to go in this, into this in a minute but for now it's just a great way to give you that initial pull and give you that initial stance on how to start getting your wall flat. Now I've got a little bit of a gap for the plaster. So I've got a tiny bit there, so when it comes to the finished plaster, I've got something to work to and it's going to be flush in line with the door frame. So yeah, that um, you need, always need to leave a bit of a gap for your plaster against the door liner. And that means that when you apply your top coat, it's going to be flush with the liner in play. And that means when you put your architraves on, when it comes to the carpenter doing his second fix, it's going to be bang on the plaster and there's not going to be any rattling, there's not going to be a movement. And even though we're relying on a strip at the bottom, this plasterboard strip here, even though we're relying on that to use as a rule, we still can't use that as a completely plumb point because the wall is a bit bent. So you need to rule one way from the batten at the bottom, but you also need to rule horizontally to make sure it's dead flat. Right, now the second reason this wall was tricky is because not only have we got a wall that was out of play and not plumb, we've also got a curve here leading to a ceiling and there's a big LED strip light running all the way through. So I bonded this um, curve pre before we've even started plastering, so it's been pre-bonded, which I highly recommend if you are going to be plastering a curve by the way. Always make sure you bond the curve first. Now this is for two reasons. One is it's the plaster is going to get a nice bit of grip to the bonding because it's rough so it's going to give it a nice key and number two is that when it comes to um, creating the curve in itself the bond just allows the plaster to firm up and it allows you to get a smoother curve at play I find if you just do a curve without bonding it first then it can be a bit of a nightmare unless there's a preformed curve previously as in maybe there's a curve wall in play beforehand maybe but I'd never create a curve without bonding it first 
multi finish just isn't thick enough. It hasn't got the capacity to create the curve as as well as say of undercoat plaster like bonding. And the other trick is when you are applying it is you've just got to follow follow the curve where you travel. So you want a nice thick mix when you're doing curves because you want it you want to have a bit of substance so you can curve it back. If it's too thin, it just slope and it just won't follow the curve. So nice and thick. And what I'm trying to do is stop short of the track. This is going to have an LED light. I don't want to fill it with plaster, so I'm trying to keep it very clean. Now the main trick here when you are creating the curves is you've just got to follow the trowel. It's almost like a flick of the wrist. There's a slight little flick when you, uh, when you create the curve, when you are plastering. It does take a lot of practice to get right, but with time it will get there. Now this bit feels like a dream compared to the curve. little tip when you're plastering onto bonding give it a bit of time between coats you don't want to jump on the bonding too soon and it's uh, apply a second coat too soon because that's when you get bubbles because the bonding is quite rough you get air trapped between the two coats so if you are applying and plastering onto bonding give it a bit of time okay as we said it's great to let if you have got bonding in play let the first coat take up a little bit and that's because you will get air pockets if you do not. If you don't do that, if you go on it too soon, you'll get air pockets. And not only that, just let the plaster settle into the curve. The other main reason, if you start playing with the curve too soon, you might find that the first coat slips and it'll start dragging. So that first coat really needs to be set into the curve and set onto the bond in itself. Otherwise, it might drag and move around and then you really start to lose a curve. Um, now again, from the top, we are just finishing the wall at the bottom here because we've done all the bonding previously you can see the plaster's finishing nicely to that door liner there on the right so not only is our wall plumb now it's going to finish nicely to the door liner so when it comes to the second fix it's all going to finish nicely it's not just about the plasterer it's about the trades after so we've really got to make sure we kind of keep our job right and uh, do it the best we can really so that's the curve in play we've done most of the work now all it is now we're going to come to the so the last last motions of trying to keep that LED strip clean, that is one of the big priorities. And what I recommend if you are plastering around LED strip is make sure the light's not in there, otherwise it's a real pain in the ass. <laughs> so I'm just going to clean off the inside of the strip with a trowel, clean off any excess plaster, and then really a lot of the work's done. But don't get me wrong, it's still a tricky job. When you're doing curves, I always recommend you finish with this. This is a Rafina Plaza Flex. It's a lovely plastic trowel and it's got lots of flex and movement in that trowel. So then when you get in the final curve, it just brings it up lovely. Good bit of kit. Final tip, if you have got a Plaza Flex or any flexi trowel, actually I recommend just a Plaza because this is amazing for curves. It just takes all the hard work out of it. It'll just follow that curve tremendously. It's so nice to use. And actually some people use it a lot earlier on. If you are really struggling using your standard trowel for the curves, maybe opt for a, a like Plaza Flex like this or even a, maybe a Super Flex. But that is it. It's the job done. The curve completed. I've got the plaster finishing into the liner nicely. And um, generally the LED strip light's clean. Everything's looking good. So that is job completed. Happy days.